So why, why do we need a comprehensive AppSec program? So uh, it's, it's kind of obvious, you know, you have Android developers who don't care about iOS. You have iOS developers who don't care about Android and you have mobile developers who don't care about what's going on in the cloud. And when I say don't care, that's obviously a, an aggressive statement. Of course they care. But their day-to-day -day responsibility doesn't involve um, anything outside their technical um, control. So if I am a Android developer, I have no control over the cloud and the iOS source code and vice versa. But as a AppSec team or someone who's in charge of AppSec or anyone in charge of data protection needs to look at everything across the board. And that's exactly our first example um, that we were promoting this webinar with, which just happened last week, February 20th, uh, when, uh, when the stock market was really good <laughs> at that time. But, um, but what happened essentially uh, about a month ago is this um, app called KidsGuard. And the app's name is not important. Um, I have a few examples here. I'm just using the one that's most recent. There's almost one every week. But KidsGuard essentially is an app that tracks uh, users on their mobile device. You know, it's marketed towards parents um, to track their kids. Um, there's a lot of apps like these. This is the one just, just uh, made a mistake about a month ago. But what was happening, that it was collecting a lot of information. It is a tracking app. Um, your SMS, your t text uh, messages, your pictures, your locations, your chats, your email, all that is collected on Android. Um, and then parents can review that of their children at any time they um, see fit. Unfortunately, this app um, had a configuration issue where when this information was being collected from the Android devices as designed, it was being sent to the cloud as designed but the cloud operator, um, or I'm sorry, the operator configuring the cloud made a pretty big mistake. Um, and the bucket it was used, the storage asset used to store all this data of uh, users was left wide open on the internet. Um, so you can see here, um, we call it a shadow API. It was an API that the um, app team didn't know about. It, in this case, it was Alibaba cloud storage, but it could have been AWS. Azure or GCP. And what was happening, and here's a direct quote from the article, it is believed the bucket was inadvertently set to public, a common mistake uh, made often caused by human error, nor was it protected with a password. And I really want to emphasize that last part. This was a mistake. Um, it wasn't a hack, um, but it was a data breach. A data breach can still be a mistake. In, in fact, it's often a mistake rather than a hacker trying to target this data and bypassing some authentication control. So the article um, for this issue is right here um, from TechCrunch, and that's why we're talking about it. But I also want to bring up an article earlier this year, um, because you might be like, well, this is a little silly, kids guard, what are they doing? Small company kind of uh, making a mistake. But that's not entirely true. Microsoft, which is a very, very big company, well known, also had a mistake. Now, not a data breach, um, but back in um, February also, February 3rd, so this three weeks before this case, um, they had a SSL um, error which caused Microsoft Teams to go down. Um, and, uh, and Microsoft Teams is obviously a very highly promoted app um, by Microsoft and competing with Slack these days. Point is, is they had a um, TLS certificate that was expired um, which caused their systems to go down. Now, this is not a data breach, but it's kind of an embarrassing issue. Like renewing your certificates is like a standard uh, for ops team. And you can see Microsoft forgot. They literally forgot. So this was just an inadvertent mistake as well. So whether it's Microsoft forgetting to renew TLS certificates or KidsGuard forgetting to um, lock down public S3 buckets, mistakes happen often whether it's Android, iOS, API, web apps, or cloud. Um, there's mistakes all over the places because changes happen more often. And I would argue changes happen more often than you're being attacked. Now, everyone's being attacked all the time, but changes are happening every second. So how do you, as an AppSec engineer, um, keep track of all this from one technology to the next? Well, it's hard. Um, kids guard. Here's another example, 63 Red Safe. They had the same type of issue last year on an admin API. No authentication was required on an API. 
Um, again, I bet their mobile developers weren't aware of this or their web app developers or their cloud infrastructure was uh, leaking data to the open internet. Um, another app, uh, Get, an, an Australian-based app, had the same issue with their search-based API. And Heyo, uh, another app, had an issue last September with an Elasticsearch database, left essentially data exposed on the internet uh, for anyone to expose or to gather. And then uh, finally, another one from late last year, Plenty of Fish, also an API issue. So I could go on and on here, um, but the, the problem is essentially it's hard to keep track of all the apps and cloud storage and everything in between unless you have a comprehensive security program. So Data Theorem, obviously this is a little bit self-serving, but whether it's mobile, web app, cloud apps, um, or APIs, we have a solution for all four, but it's not because we want to. It's not because we're like, hey, let's just go ahead and do this. There's a need in the industry to look at an app from a comprehensive level, from mobile to web apps, to APIs, to cloud. Otherwise, if you don't have that comprehensive program, if three of those four assets are locked down, it could be that fourth one that isn't that exposes your data. So for example, in this particular example, I'm sure this mobile app was locked down. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But all faucets of the um, uh, technology stack has to be locked down. Otherwise, attackers will find that one area um, that isn't. Okay. So of all these hacks that I just showed, including KidsGuard, let's talk about how they did that. What actually happened um, for this to, to be successful? Well, there's a clever technique that hackers are using right now with, uh, with what we call shadow APIs. And I'm just going to go through it in brief detail. Um, line by line. So what the first thing that attackers do is essentially, and I'm showing a video now, if you're not able to see the video, let me know. But what they're going to do is download an app um, from the public internet. In this case, it's a mobile app. Um, we could also do this with web apps uh, or APIs. But essentially, in this example, um, an attacker is, is downloading the Amazon app. And what they're going to do is decompile it uh, remove the Apple DRM and basically disassemble it so they can look at the contents of the mobile app directly in terms of uh, uh, the binary. Now, this is very common and very easy. No real special hacking techniques are, are being completed now. It's just, uh, it's just a standard practice if you're an attacker or anyone just looking at a mobile app. And because this is hosted on Apple and Google's cloud, the App Store or the Play Store, this is all possible and publicly accessible data. Um, just like if there's a web app sitting out there on the internet. So this is step one. Um, and once this is done, um, you'll see that the attacker has a listing of all the APIs that this mobile app is talking to. And that's our second step. Um, and I'm going to show a video of that as well. So now that we've decompiled the uh, mobile app, now we're going to go what I call API hunting. We're going to look for APIs within this mobile app. Again, this is all standard, nothing amazing. Uh, I'll tell you in a second why we're doing this, but all the um, items and bright green font are all domains that have APIs behind them. Um, and again, this is just like enumerating public information. Nothing very interesting here in terms of an attacker's uh, perspective. But the reason why we're doing this, and this is the technique that attackers are doing, it's very clever. What they're doing is they're gonna download your apps today, they're gonna decompile them and look for all the APIs like I just showed. Then when you have new releases of your app, um, in this case, mobile apps, they're gonna download those new releases as well. And then they're gonna perform a diff. They're gonna see what new APIs are available on your new apps that weren't there previously on previously versions of your older apps. And the reason why they're gonna do that is any new APIs that show up essentially is a shadow API. They're gonna bet that new APIs that are showing up are APIs that the security team is not aware of. And so this small window of opportunity is gonna allow them to basically target um, new APIs, and that's what the video I'm going to show now, um, more quickly than your internal security team or your internal security processes. 
So you can see here, we wrote a script called Shadow API Hunter. We're gonna um, compare the old Amazon app from an April release to a new Amazon app from a current day release. And what you're gonna see here at the end of this script, if everything at the bottom is everything net new in the Amazon app. So your developers are moving fast, changes are moving fast, and attackers know about this. That's exactly what they prey on. So all those attacks that I showed earlier, including Kids Guard, those were probably because an attacker knew that there's a window of opportunity between one release to the next to figure out, uh, to target new APIs or new cloud storage. And that's when you go, um, basically go in for the kill. And the opportunity is not months, um, maybe not even weeks, it might be days. So using this technique of looking at an old version of an app and a new version and seeing what everything that new um, is an opportunity for attackers to hack your data. So you can see here, everything in net new is labeled as new. And so now the attacker has a list of targets that are new. And now he or she will now to connect to those targets and see what data they can get. So that's the next video I'll show. And this is very simple too. So again, no real difficult hacking here. So now we're inspecting all those net new APIs. Everything in green are things that we have connected to. Um, and then finally, the last step, is uh, now this is test data. So everything we showed thus far is real Amazon data. It's all public essentially, but this is where the demo goes to uh, fake information because obviously we would never expose anything um, publicly of any customer or non-customer. But essentially, once you connect to the API, you can pull all the data, extract all the data from it. And that's what happened in all those five use cases, including KidsGuard, is when the data was extracted, it happened to be sensitive data and then bam, you have a data breach on your hand and you're in, the, and you're in tech crunch, unfortunately. Um, and so that is a very low tech but highly successful way for attackers to get access to your data. Um, and all starts with, again, a comprehensive security program. Was the Android app locked down? Maybe, maybe not. All right, let's say it was. What about the web app? Yeah, let's say that was. What about cloud storage? No, it wasn't, right? And so that's why you need to look at all aspects of the app, not just the client or the server or the cloud storage capacities uh, within it. So to recap, what did we do here? We decrypted mobile apps. Um, we hunted for APIs within the mobile app. And then we do a differential analysis between one release to the next. We could do this on web apps, mobile apps, APIs, uh, basically anything publicly accessible. Once we did the diff, you know, we targeted the diff only, the only difference uh, net new APIs because we knew there's a window of opportunity that security teams internally might not know about it because developers run faster than most organizations, uh, within most organizations in any other group. We connected to all those APIs in storage assets. And then of course we extracted data. And all those examples that I showed, that's probably what happened using these four steps. These are all scriptable. And unfortunately, there's millions of targets out there. So were these five apps targeted by attackers? Maybe, maybe not. But the thing is, there's a long list of targets, RESTful APIs, mobile apps, single page web apps, and serverless apps, all hosted in the cloud that an attacker can target and script up um, items one through four and just have that run on a daily basis. And then every day they just get a data breach that they wanna um, basically prey on from one week to the next. Okay. So now it comes to data theorem in our demo. So how do you solve this problem? Now it's not an easy problem to solve. Um, you don't need to do a data theorem. There's a lot of tools out there, but one thing you do need is to kind of have a vision of how to see your own um, application attack surface. And that's where we come into play. We are from the attack side, myself a pen tester from about 20 years ago. Our product is on the attack side to make sure we're looking at all your application attack surfaces top down. So whether it's API, mobile, storage, serverless, or web apps, we look at all those assets from an authentication, authorization, and encryption perspective, just like an attacker would do as if he or she were trying to target you on the public internet. 